Hello friends, in my last two sessions, I have told you the concept of basic runway length, how it is estimated for different conditions of landing takeoff. And also in the second session, I told you how this basic runway length, which is estimated for normal takeoff and normal landing case and engine failure case is corrected for elevation, temperature and the gradient. Now, in this session, we will discuss remaining elements of geometric design of a runway. And the first is the runway width. Now, studies conducted by ICAO has shown that majority of the air traffic is concentrated towards center of the runway. That is the distribution of air traffic on a runway. Now, this is the center line of the runway and distance on either side of the center line and the conditions like wet pavement or night operations or cross wind they do not have much effect on the vehicle distribution or aircraft distribution on the runway and in case of larger aircraft also the maximum concentration of the air traffic is within 30 meter means 15 meter on either side of the runway center line. Assuming that there will be some allowance required of let us say uh, 7.5 meter on either side and therefore 45 meter is considered as the maximum width required for operation of an aircraft on the runway. And therefore, ICAO has suggested a runway width of 18 meter to 45 meter depending upon the class of the airport. And as I told you in my last session, ICAO has classified airports based on two letter code that is 1 to 4 and A to E. And this table gives you the runway width which are suggested by ICAO for different class of aerodromes and this varies from 18 meter for 1A and 1B class to 45 meter for class 4, 3D, 3E, 4C, 4D and 4E. That is the runway, length, runway width. Another geometric parameter is runway safety area or what we call the landing strip landing strip or runway safety area. Now this basically includes runway, paved runway plus shoulder and shoulders are provided to give a psychological improvement on the runway to give openness to the pilot so that he feels safe while landing. Shoulders are of lesser strength, they are not supposed to sustain the load of the aircraft. The width of safety area which is recommended by ICAO is 75 meter for non-instrumental runway minimum is 75 meter and for instrumental runway it is 150 meter. Now these are minimum width. It depends upon the availability of the space, the availability of the ground. Now here non-instrumental runways are those which are not equipped with ILS facilities, instrumental landing system facility. So these runways are not used during bad weather conditions as well as during night operations. Instrumental runways are those with where you provide ILS facilities, ILS means instrumental landing system. Then. In addition to these shoulders, blast pads are also provided on either end of the runway, particularly on runway which are serving jet engine aircraft. And these blast pads are also generally non-traffic area. Now this is the runway and these are shoulders.
the width of the blast pad this is the blast pad which is provided on either side either end of the runway this is a paved surface just to protect the erosion of the soil because of jet blast of the aircraft and they are provided on each end here also the width of this blast pad is the runway width plus shoulder width both total landing strip and this length can vary from 30 meter to 120 meter. This is also a non-traffic area, but it should be able to resist the erosion because of jet blast coming from the jet engine aircraft. Because in case of jet engine aircraft, the tailpipe is closer to the ground and therefore it creates more damage to the area here and that is why we provide these blast pads. The third is the transverse gradient. Now transverse gradient as in case of highways, they are required to quickly drain the water from the pavement surface because if the water stands on the runway, it can cause damage to the aircraft and these should be mild. They should be very mild, should not be very steep, but you need certain minimum transverse gradient to dispose of the water. The gradient depends upon the type of surface for flexible payment, for flexible payment runway, its minimum value is 1.0 percent, that is minimum and for rigid payment, its value is 0.5 percent minimum gradient minimum transverse gradient which is required to drain off the water quickly and as i told you it should not be very steep and therefore ikao suggested the highest value also the maximum value also maximum value is 2 percent for air, for runway serving small aircrafts like reference code a and B and it is 1.5 percent for aerodrome code C, D and E. These are the values of transverse gradient on runway and shoulders, shoulders are generally of loose material, they are normal soil compacted or maybe stabilized soil compacted or maybe with grass and therefore they need a steeper slope to drain the water and the suggestion or the recommendation of ICAO is now this is the runway and you have the shoulder on either side so first few meter require a steeper slope so first three meter can be provided with a 5 percent slope, very steep slope and after that it can be 1.5 to 3 percent depending upon the type of soil, type of shoulder. It can be up to 1.5 to 3 percent but these are upper limits of transverse gradient on shoulders. Then another important design element is the longitudinal gradient. Now longitudinal gradient on the runway should be as flat as possible because as we discussed in our last session, the gradient will increase the length of the runway required, but the topography may demand some gradient on the runway in the uh, longitudinal direction also. Now this is the ICAO has suggested that maximum longitudinal gradient should be 1.25 percent to 1.5 percent for large airports, for large airports and when I say large airport it basically means 3 and 4 and it can be up to 2 percent for 1 and 2. 1 and 2 type of 
runway. The flatter gradient should be provided in the first quarter and last quarter. Flatter gradient should be provided in the first and last quarter of the runway length. And this is generally 0 to 0 0.8 percent, either no gradient or very mild gradient of 0 0.8 percent, that is the upper limit. Now, maximum effective gradient, what is maximum effective gradient? I told you last time in my session, the runway length is corrected for effective gradient on the runway. Effective gradient is the RL of the highest point on the runway minus RL of the lowest point divided by length of the runway. That is important for determining the corrected length of runway. And therefore, the maximum value of effective gradient which is suggested by ICAO is 1 percent for 2, 3 and 4 type of airport and it can be up to 2 percent for a small airport which are designated by 1. Aerodrome code 1. In addition to these, the grade change is also important consideration. If you have the profile like this, then this value of grade change N1 or this value N2 is also important. N1 or N2 are limited to 1.5 percent for reference code 3 and 4 and up to 2 percent for 1 and 2 means for small airports you can have up to 2 percent grade change but for large airports should be limited to 1.5 percent. Then this distance between the points of grade change is also important that is we call D because that basically will provide the space for provision of vertical curve and then if this is very steep if the point of change here is very steep it may create immature lift in the aircraft during takeoff run. Now this distance between points of grade intersections D is 300 and 1 plus and 2 for airport class 4 or 150 into N1 plus N2 for 3 and 50 into N1 plus N2 for 1 and 2. That is the minimum distance required between two points of grade change. And length of vertical curve L, L is 300 N. N grade change okay, G1 minus G2. It can be N1, it can be N2. 300 N for 4, for aircraft, for airport class 4, 150 N for 3 and 75 N for 1 and 2. And no vertical curve is required if the grade change is if n is less than or equal to 0.4 percent then no vertical curve is required vertical curve is required so that is how the longitudinal profile of the runway is designed then Last point is the side distance. Side distance on the runway is generally not a problem, but it becomes a critical issue when two runways cross each other or a runway and a taxiway cross each other. And in that case, side distance should be adequately available. But in case of longitudinal profile, if these standards are followed, then side distance is not a issue. What Ikao says that any two points, any two points which are 
y meter above the center line of the runway must be visible for a distance equal to x and what is y and what is x x and y that depends upon again the class of airport for a type of airport category this y is 1.5 meter for b it is 2.1 meter and for c d and e it is 3 meter 5 feet 7 feet and 10 feet above center line of the runway two points on the runway which are y meter above the center line the runway should be visible for a distance equal to x mutually visible and this x is for all cases half of the runway length now let me just take a small example just to illustrate how we design the longitudinal profile of runway the runway gradation plan indicates that there is a rising gradient of 1.5 percent meeting a falling gradient of 0 0.5 percent this falling gradient again meets a rising gradient of 0 0.3 percent what should be the separation between the points of grade change d this distance is required d now the airport reference score is 3 and for 3 this is the distance required 150 into n1 plus n2 that is a distance d now n1 here is 1.5 minus minus 0 0.5 that is 2 percent n2 is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 that is 0 0.8 percent you take absolute values and therefore d will be 150 into 2 plus 0 0.8 and this is equal to 420 meters 420 meter. The next part of the question is what should be the length of the vertical curve at the points of grade change. So, L1 will be 150 into N1, N1 is 2 that is 300 and L2 will be 150 into 0.8 that is 120 meter total sum is 420 so that is the vertical curve for case one for grade change one and this vertical curve and this distance is 420 now this length of the vertical curve which is coming at this point this is half of the total length that is 150 meter and this is another half of the length that is 60 meter that is the consideration here that you should be able to provide the complete length of the curve between two points of grade change and that is how you calculate d so that is the design of longitudinal profile of the runway so friends thank you very much for watching this video if you have any question you can write in the comment box